All right, welcome everybody. This is day 10 in quarantine in India. And we have one of our best friends here, Lawrence Lanoff. He's live from LA. And we talked about a week ago on one of our first Facebook Lives and Lawrence had done an Instagram video about around a lot of things and like turning the fear into ecstasy and like creating the spaciousness inside of us. But there was one line that really touched me and now tons of you have been writing me about it. And Lawrence said, it's not real until it's real for you. And so I wanted to do a whole Facebook Live around that subject and like the different frameworks that we're all operating by in the world and how we might be able to upgrade them a little bit right now. Yeah, it's definitely, hey, hey. <laughs> it's definitely a good time to, I was uh, actually just having a conversation about this. Like it's a really good time to upgrade your, you know, just the, like, like anything that isn't working for you is under a lot of pressure right now. So it's a really good time to do some upgrading. So got time to do it. <laughs> yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, um, so, so tell me what some of the questions were and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll kind of start there. Like, like what is the, you were mentioning a little bit about just kind of like what people were, you know, lots of competing ideas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's still, there's a ton of this or that, but mm. especially around the virus, then people, uh, half, like half of the camps are, this is super real and you have to quarantine and you have to take care of everything. And the other half is like, well, the flu has been going on forever and it kills more people. Like that's one, but there's all of these different things of it's not as bad or this is life threatening. Right. And it's especially important that are quarantined together then it's causing a lot of conflict between the two of them because one is like we got to prepare like we have to do these things the other one's like everything's going to go back to normal in a week like it's there so there's this such a huge gap yeah. in the person's thinking and they're thinking the other why is it the other person thinking the same way i'm thinking well you know it's, it's interesting because this is this is um if you stand back which is i think we're it's the best place to look at these things. You have to stand back. By the way, we're communicating like with cell phone because you're across <laughs> the world, but also there's a lot of burden on the internet. And um, that's one of the things that this, the, this particular uh, crisis has shown is, you know, the infrastructure still needs a lot of work, but it's, it's still amazing that we can talk like this, but I'm speaking to you on the phone and simultaneously on video with two very different streams, but, just so everybody knows why I'm like, hey, I'm talking into my phone. Here's why. So, um, uh, so it's, what's fascinating is if you if you stand back, you want to go back to kind of the metaphorically like the thirty thousand foot view. So, the first thing to understand is is humans by nature we all think we're right about the stuff that we think we're right about, which is paradoxically one of the problems, one of the limitations of perception. So we feel like we understand everything, but that in itself is a, is a, is just kind of just, it's incorrect, right? So you could see this something simple, 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 like, you know, you put your keys down and then they're gone from your field of vision. You're like, where'd I put my keys? Where'd I put my keys? Where'd I put my keys? I don't see them, right? You literally, your brain does not see the keys. Somebody else walks in and they're like, oh, they're right here in front of you. And you're like, oh God, there they are right in front of me. But prior to that moment, what was happening is your brain was just filling in blank space. So it literally could not see the keys even though they were there. Cause that's what we do. Well, we make glasses on top of your head. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. And that's, it's the same kind of thing. So what's happening right now is people have, you know, due to their own traumas and their own history and the way they were raised and all that stuff, everybody's got their background, but basically there's kind of these two camps and one camp is the, well, there's, there's kind of three really there's extremes. So one side, one, one of the three is this is the worst pandemic and we're all going to die and it's the end of the world. Now, I have heard that more in younger people because they don't know, they don't have a reference point. They haven't, so, so you know, some of these young kids, they're going to be dealing with PTSD around this 
you know, some of them, especially if they have parents that are really on the extreme of like panic. And, you know, I mean, I have friends who, who've gone so far as to like run to compounds in the mountains of Mount Montana and dig holes to wait out the apocalypse, you know? So you've got that extreme. That's like super, super, that's like an outlier all the way out. But, but they're still in the spectrum of the people who are like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened. And so those are the people who are like, you know, stocking toilet paper and hoarding everything because they're like, hey, we don't know how long this is going to end. And so those folks are, those are the ones who are taking it ultra seriously. You know, people are dying and this and that, right? Then there's this middle ground of people. I, I fall, I'm sure I fall more into that category, which is like, which is like, it's kind of middle ground. You recognize that there are people who are dying. We, I have some friends, I have friends both who have had deaths already from Corona, um, who've been affected by it. Of course, you know, New York city has been, you know, especially the medical, the medical system where people are on the front lines, you know, that's been getting hammered and will continue to. Um, and then you have, you know, then you have kind of the, the space where, you know, kind of that, that sort of dissociation, that kind of what, what in our more spiritual communities looks like, like, Hey, we're not real anyway. So, you know, this is all an illusion. And so that's, that's kind of that side, that's an extreme over there. And then, then there's also kind of the, the extreme of that extreme, which is just like, this isn't a thing at all. It's completely made up. And I've heard all of those stories thus far. And by the way, I know people who have died. So, so now we're, we're, um, I'm seeing a pattern that I've seen before, because this is not the first pandemic that I've seen in my life. This isn't the first flu kind of thing. But then I also saw the whole HIV AIDS thing. And I saw that right from the very beginning, because I was in New York City at the epicenter. And I saw people's reactions, and they were the same you know, the similar kinds of things divided into like, this isn't a thing. So, so the people who were on the extremes, they were like, nobody should ever have any sex ever unless it's heterosexual, heteronormative to make a baby. And they, and that was really brought forth as a, as a, as a thing that this was a punishment. I have heard in this particular crisis right now, I've heard very, um, religious oriented humans talk about this asking you know what did we do to get punished like this why is god angry with us right so so you're going to see so if we stand back what we have is we have a whole bunch of stress added to an already pretty dysregulated system i mean i think pretty much everybody would would agree this has been a pretty strange few years between the the presidencies and the economies and the, you know, there's a lot's been going on, right? So you already had this kind of fracture in the norms. And then the, the, what started out, I remember, you know, like in the first days of this presidency, you know, people were like trying to make sense of everything. And now it's just the norm. It's just like, what's the crazy thing that's going to happen today at 4 PM to catch the evening news cycle. And that's kind of, we've already been in this like, whoa, what, 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 you know, deep state and all this stuff going on. So, so people are really in a state of uncertainty. Then you add essentially a black swan event, which this is, where this completely improbable things line up all at the same time. And people, because we don't understand, we don't have a normal understanding of statistics and we don't understand what's possible. It just, it's so, it seems so over the top and improbable and we can't conceive of it. Therefore, it must not be true, mm. right? That's again, another like, well, I can't imagine it. Therefore, it can't be true. Right. That's a limitation because that that's that's us thinking that we do know everything or should know everything. And then that gets into the whole, you know, that's a whole other story, which we've spoken about many times. But you but those are leveraged through blame and shame. 
So that's kind of a picture of where I see us right now. We're in this, this position where the stresses and uncertainty were high. And then we just added a global stress and pressure augmented with death. That's, you know, for a lot of people, that's just too much. And so we're going to see far deeper than the corona, you know, the, because the virus, like we, yes, we have adapted. Coronavirus has been around for a long time. This is a new iteration, but we will develop immunity. We will develop, a, you know, some kind of um, vaccination. And then this will be a thing of the past. It happens to mutate very slowly. So we actually will be able to create a, you know, we will be able to get a, a vaccine within a year. So that's cool. And then there's lots of medications. There's some beautiful things that have happened. So all of this is happening. But when we're in this, like, the limbic alarm state, the limbic brain doesn't, it doesn't have the ability to think. Our emotions don't, they don't, that's what makes them emotions. They come out of the unconscious. And they come welling up. And so it's very overwhelming. And I just see this for people. I've had, oh my God, the conversations, the terror I've seen, the, the thing. So, so where I'm going with all of this is those, instead of going like, I'm right and you're wrong, or this is right, or that's wrong. These are really, it's the wrong thing. It's, it's not even the right question. So if you, so if you, if you're asking the wrong question or having the wrong argument, that doesn't even make any sense because you know, pandemics happen factually and, and, you know, nobody was prepared. I mean, people knew something like this could happen, but we didn't have an emotional reference point, but now the globe will. So this is a rare moment in time and it's a beautiful moment in time. It's like, I've cried more during this, the last two weeks because I've seen such beauty and such horror, and, and when I say horror, what I mean is more in people's minds, right? The feel like the panic in their eyes, the ah, I'm dying, or you're gonna die, or you could infect me, or, you know, I've seen hoarding, I've seen fist fights break out over, you know, supplies. I mean, it's like, wow, it's fascinating. So that's one fact, it's true. And, and, and you know, you're looking at this incredible, overwhelming medical response, frontline people, beautiful just stunning i have a i have a friend of mine who's on the front lines in san fran and a friend in um and all actually all over the all over parts of the country who are you know frontlining it and uh it's just beautiful to see what they're doing and how they're helping and the innovation that's coming from it and there are some people stoking panic and fear and taking advantage but there's a lot of people doing far more people doing really interesting innovative things and we're going to see we're going to see innovations that probably haven't happened since to the extent that they're going to happen now. They probably haven't happened since the, the 1812 um, flu outbreak. And then, and then the bubonic plague where, you know, Shakespeare wrote a lot and uh, Newton invented some of the theorems, you know, some of these uh, theories, like including gravity that all happened during the bubonic plague when people isolated so, so on one hand, for those of us, for those of you that can hear me on this, this is a moment to really understand your resiliency. This is a moment to be super kind to yourself and to the people you love because just because we don't understand the full impact of the pressure doesn't mean that there isn't phenomenal amounts of pressure. And it's coming at us everywhere, right? Every, every ding on the phone, every, it's like Corona this, you know, different stories. And it's just, just understand. So, so number one, opportunity to develop self-compassion right now, right now, right now, like this moment, you can boom, going to be compassionate to myself, be kind to myself, right? This is the time when you, you treat yourself with kindness. This is the time when we cut our, cut our friends and family and partners a lot of slack where if you need to take a walk, go to take a walk. If you need to scream in a pillow, scream in a pillow. You know, really don't push it out there because out there literally everything 
is deadly in this moment in the frameworks we're using, right? The monster is invisible. So everything is out there. And so the, 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 you know, that those parts of our mind are just on hyper alert. So be kind to that. I just was talking literally just before we took this call. Um, I was helping a friend kind of recognize what was happening and he was having trouble breathing and he was like, Oh my God, I'm going to, I think I've got Corona. And I'm like, no, you don't have Corona. Now that being said, I have one other interesting thing. Um, I got, I've been getting lots of frontline information, which I love because that's where the data is. Um, and one of the beautiful things um, with this data is you start to see you're just starting to see patterns emerging. So one of the things is, is it looks like because the, the virus sort of generated the first sort of awareness of it was in November, a full month earlier than was originally reported. So it was November. So that means if you think about all the flights, 4,000 flights in the air at any given moment, just on just in America. Um, so you think about all the global flights going around November, November, December, January, February, four months. So there is evidence emerging now that this virus has been spreading and people have been getting it the whole time. So I think we're going to find out once testing is available that the mortality rate on this is just is actually much lower than it appears when you just don't have the data. But but there are people coming into the into the ER with a different injury. I broke my arm. Oh, okay, well, while you're here, let's test you for Corona. Oh, you have it, right? So that means they were exposed at some point, maybe January, December, or January, February. Yeah. So there's a, you know, so that's fascinating too, which just tells us that the numbers are much smaller, but it doesn't mean that they're not real. They're very real, but, um, but this, is what we, this is what we deal with. So I like to look at these things both literally but I also like to look at them metaphorically, you know, so on a metaphorical level, there's an opportunity for you to be kind to yourself, to, to maybe to take in ideas that are very uncomfortable, you know, especially for more, you know, more of us in the spiritual world, we just don't want to deal with the blood and the guts and the realities, but, but it's a good opportunity to do that. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's beautiful. I mean, that's part of, that was part of, um, you know, part of some of the deeper, really deep spiritual practices are be able to be able to look death in the face. And this is an opportunity to do that. You can run from it. You can la la la. That's fine too. You can do, that's the beautiful thing in this. You can really see who you are. How do you, how do you handle these things? And instead of being mean and abusive and fighting about stuff, what well, we don't need, you don't, that, that's one thing I can guarantee you, you don't need to do. And there is no amount of, there's no universe where worrying and stressing and being angry at other arguing about shit, that's not going to help your immune system. So be selfish, man. Cut that bullshit out. And, you know, like, take care of yourself. I'm out exercising every day. Um, I just refuse. The one thing that I can do is I can choose how... I can influence how I experience this experience. And so I'm using it to go, I'm digging out materials that I completely forgot about. I have beautiful meditations. I've got stuff coming. I'm actually going to lead a, um, I'm going to do a, 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 probably a month, month and a half long training on Zoom because I want to teach people this stuff. It's, it's crucial to well being, but I never would have done that before. Um, so there's all these things like this that I think are just magnificent. And I, I would invite you, especially if your nature is to go towards, you know, Armageddon, the end of the world, I, I will guarantee you 1000% mark my words, put it down, put a date timestamp on this video. This is not about Armageddon. This is not the end of the world. There is actually very little that has changed which is crazy, but what has changed is up here. And if you want to take a lesson, just learn how just one idea can change your entire reality. Because we saw it happen in a day. This thing wasn't dangerous. And now it's like, oh my God, social distancing. Now, why is social distancing is important? 
for the people who are like, ah, whatever, I don't care, right? There's all these people who are just kind of like, I don't, blah, 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 whatever the thing is, right? Social distance, distancing isn't for you. It's not about you. It's about taking care of the other humans who are on the planet and taking care of the people in your community because this isn't a time to be selfish. You know, this is a time, yes, I know we're all uncomfortable sitting inside, but you know, there's things to do, man. This is time to go inside. I, I discovered some traumas in my psyche, really deep traumas. Like I'm talking traumas from like six months old, eight months old. That's incredible. I never would have found those things without this level of an, an intensity of like upheaval and stress. But that's how deeply some people are being affected by this. And, um, and that's a beautiful thing because especially those of you who are listening who are healers, like now is the time, like this is it. Like you're here, this is the stuff. Healing is irrelevant when you're sitting in the cave and every need is attended to, or you're doing Vipassana and you got breakfast and lunch and dinner and everything's provided. And, you know, no, it, this is it. This is it. This is in the front lines. That's where you do those things so that you're prepared for this kind of stuff. And this is going to be longer, right? We've got another, at least, uh, at least in the United States, we have till um, the 30th of April as of right now. Um, and I get it. And it's not, this isn't about me. You know, there, we are working together on a planet of almost 8 billion people. And this is part of how we take care of each other. And I think it's very sweet. And you have that opportunity. It, it, you know, like we spend our whole lives being selfish, man. Take two months and CTFO and just be kind to some people. You know, it's not about you. It's not about you got to get out and, you know, you don't care, whatever, because whatever. It's not, that's not it. This is the time to be helpful. It's two months. It's, you know, whatever, six weeks, four weeks, five weeks out of your life. Like, big deal, man. You know, like, that's it. And, and I think if, if we really, to me, this is a spiritual practice. This is how you find out who you are spiritually. This is, are you walking your path? Or are you just, you know, whatever. And I don't care, like you're entitled to do whatever you want, but I'm just saying like fundamentally the frame really is there are times to take care of other people. And now's one of the times, man. That's all. Lawrence, I, let me pose a question to you. There's a lot of people who are in uncharted territory and uncharted waters where they have no context of what's happening and or what could possibly happen. So there's a lot of people who are in the fear of the unknown. Yeah. But my question to you is, what is the suggestion you can give to these people of how to deal with the unknown that is coming up for them? Because right now there's people with hamster wheels going on inside of their head and they're just running themselves ragged and crazy sure. trying to figure out what do I do next? How do I anticipate my next moves when I have no context for what the fuck is going on in my world? So what, what would be a lovely suggestion to these people of how to deal with that fear of the unknown. Well, I'm gonna I'm going to come back. It's a it's a fascinating thing that you say that. So what's fascinating about that is is I feel like the closer we are based to our actual experience, you're just we are getting in touch with the reality that there's a lot of unknown all the time. And it's just laid bare right now. But there's always unknown. I mean, there's un like, like that's, the, that's the fascinating part. It's not like the time has changed. It's just our idea about the time has changed, which then adds pressure. But fundamentally, nothing's different, man. I mean, you know, you, the trees are blowing, the wind is doing the, you know, I, you're, you're wearing your beautiful hat, Peter, and you know, and the wind is blowing it and there's a river running behind you. And, you know, like, like fundamentally on. life is identical. And, and so, so the only thing that changed was up here, right? That like the birds don't, that's the beauty. Like, I, like I was outside, like I was mentioning earlier, like I've cried. I mean, it's a surprising number of times. Like I looked at the sky yesterday and I just started crying. 
crying because it was beautiful, clear, Bert, you know, the pollution is down on the planet, on the planet, right? This is stuff where you have, you have countries arguing, we can't change this, we can't do that, we can't, we can't, we can't. Well, guess what? We just did. Crazy. The opportunity. It's, it's it, you know, and, and so you can't prepare for that. You can't prepare for looking up into the sky and just being overwhelmed for, with emotion. Like that's, that's the beauty. It's just, we live in this semi, and I get it because we have to build our cultures and we have to do stuff and we have to trust stuff, but we, we're on a, you know, a rock with a molten core flying through the universe in untold speeds in an in in an infinitely expanding galaxy among galaxies you know when you start talking about the known i'm just like have you looked at the stars lately you know what i mean it's just but it's a it it's it feels unknown because it's a break an extreme break from the routines and the things that we have come to trust but but I, I love these things because, because that's what you're seeing is more reality, which is there, you know, we spend a lot of time in the unknown. Um, there's patterns, but I mean, nobody knows where this is gonna go. You just, you know, you know, there are patterns, you know, we will get through this because we get through everything because that's why, why humans have thrived as well as we have because we do have the ability to to respond. And I've been in disasters before. I've been in, I was in a coup d'etat. I mean, I know this feeling where it feels like it's going to last forever, but it's not. And, um, and this will be one of the stories. And this will either be a story that will help you grow and become more resilient and more empowered. And you're utilizing it or, you know, and you, you, you relax. And this is the key that you're asking, Peter, you relax into the experience of the panic of not knowing, right? There's nothing like how many times have you been in yoga class and they go, oh, that stretch is uncomfortable. Breathe into it. Well, guess what? This stretch is uncomfortable. Breathe into it. This is the stretch that not everything is what we thought. And that's, that is the spiritual practice. We are on it. We are on it. This is it. This is it. all the stuff, all the meditations, all the mantras, yantras, all the things that we've done, this is it. It is, it's like, it applies now or what the hell have we been doing, right? But this is it. And it's a beautiful opportunity. So that's, that's basically what I'm saying is like, now is the time we have entered, you know, I feel this when I go to Burning Man sometimes. This is like global Burning Man right now. I have no idea what's going to happen. But in the context, like if we had the frame of Burning Man, you're like, oh, fine. Because it's Burning Man and you pay for a ticket. Well, you paid for this ticket. You're paying for it right now. And this is global Burning Man. This is what it's like. You don't have any clue. Any moment, anything could happen in any direction. So relax into it. Breathe into it. Lean into it. This is your spiritual path. We're living it. This is it. And you can make it you know, like, like, like I said, I mean, it, if the frame is burning, man, everybody's happy. People die at burning, man. You know, it's like, okay, you know, we don't shut down the whole festival. You could, there's been a lot of people going like, oh my God, you know, one person did this thing. So we should shut it all down. But that's, that's just not how it is. So lean into the unknown, breathe into the unknown. I'm meditating two, three times a day now. Right? Especially if I find my anxiety level going up because it's global anxiety. It's not just your anxiety. So be no. kind. <laughs> Lean into it. All the tools. All the yoga class. Everything we've done has are been you, for you, this moment right here. Are you finding a whole nother level of freedom, Lauren? Of course. Because I feel like I can't know. Like, are, are you even in control? Gone. 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 It's gone. And then all of a sudden, there's this. And I'm with you. Like I made a post. I've never, I've cried more 
deeper in the last two weeks than I have in the last 40 years. And we have it time is so, to. Yes. And so there's this, if you can't know, there's this huge freedom if you can just let go of trying. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, they, I'm, I'm just looking, you know, behind you, you two is this incredible scene, right? Yeah. And, and that's the paradox. So right? It's incredible. I mean, you're in this valley, but where is our attention in all of this? So like, you know, there are people who are hungry in that valley behind you. There are people who are, you know, there's, there's everything of everywhere at any given moment. And um, where we focus our attention becomes really important. So I'm not in denial, right? We don't want to be in like, oh, this isn't happening. I mean, it's fine. Like if you're coping that way, that's totally cool, by the way. I'm not here to give a treatise on how you're supposed to cope with a disaster. Just really leaning, giving, really just offering some ways and different frames and just understand that if you paid for this ticket to Burning Man and we're like, man, we don't know. I mean, that's the beautiful thing of Burning Man. You let go of the schedule. Right. You don't know. Somebody goes, look, I'm going to meet you. Okay. When are we going to meet? Uh, I don't know. Friday of the, you know, on the man burn at sunset. Okay. You know, see you in two weeks, maybe. So <laughs> I, I just think there is, there is the potential for more freedom. I personally am using this and I will share this with you. I've seen beautiful people, classes and things and friends and lots of people stepping up in ways that are just gorgeous. And um, now is the time to be kind. I will tell you that, man, because everybody on the planet is feeling the same things you are. Literally, there is nobody not be, I mean, very there, I'm sure there are some people, but I'm just saying generally, a majority of the population on planet Earth is experiencing the identical thing. So I have been feeling a lot more freedom and emotional and, you know, I was, I've felt a lot of like really depressed yesterday. I mean, like not depressed is not exactly the right word, but compressed, depressed. Um, I don't want to use that word so lightly, but it's that sense of like, you know, dread in a way. Right. And then, and then you recognize it and it's like, Oh yeah, that, okay. Little meditation cuddled my little baby inside. I mean, it's, it's it's really beautiful because we have the time and um i'm also really excited for the kids like there have been a lot of kids younger people who their whole life has been this and right now they're like i don't want to you know what, what we're just showing instagram of us in different you know states of lockdown you know <laughs> like it's like 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 all the things that they were looking at are like eh, you know so so i i think i think we're going to be seeing the repercussions of this on a whole bunch of levels for a long time. I mean, somebody right now is using this time and we'll come up with some, we'll, we'll see lots of life-changing technologies and things. And that, that's super exciting. I mean, just my own creativity, my own writing, catching up, learning stuff. I mean, I've, I've probably bought, I don't know, 15 classes and a whole bunch of different things. It was amazing, rare, rare, rare moment in history. And you're, here we are all getting to be part of it. Well, let me know when you announce your month long class and then I'll, I'm definitely going to join and I'll share it with everybody. Oh and yeah. Yeah. I, I will. I'm so grateful for your framework, Sunny. Like, is there, is there one piece that you could offer for the people that are in the different camps that they can uh, allow that both things could be happening at simultaneously? Well, so here's one thing to keep in mind. Um, just remember there were things that you believed very strongly that turned out to be incorrect. So rather than assuming we know everything, it, way, it makes way more sense to just assume that it is possible that you could be incorrect. And just that one thing, just that one thing, right? Just consider the possibility, because if you can't consider that possibility, I can guarantee you, you are incorrect. But if you, if you can consider the possibility, well, what if I'm wrong? What if I don't have all the information? What if there's some things that I don't understand? I mean, we've all had that. I mean, when I was 15, I thought I knew everything. I'd look at grownups and go, what's the problem with life? Why are you guys so stressed out about it? You know, just be like, 
I've got this all figured out, you know, but then fortunately we grow and we learn and, and I, my framework, my general framework, which I'll share with you, because that's what, you know, is just a, like my general framework is, it makes way more sense to assume I'm wrong than it does to assume I'm right. Because of the limited amount of information we have about anything at any given moment. And, um, you know, I feel like if you can be, if you can just consider that, you know, well, what if I'm wrong about this? Well, okay, if you're wrong, is it worth all that stress and friction for something that isn't even a thing? And then, and then I would say another thing, you know, people are acting, you know, right now it feels super stressful, but people had similar feelings. Like when the world trade centers were happening, there was a lot of dread and panic and, you know, there's lots of different things when you're in the middle of a hurricane or, you know, those things feel really real and it's a lot of emotional intensity, but they pass and it's okay to be wrong. It's okay, you know, to have feel emotional about stuff and just be kind. Like the general frame is be kind because it's very likely you have some part of whatever you believe incorrect. So why am I going to, it just doesn't make sense, right? Like we're going to come back, we'll, we'll look back at, for example, the toilet paper hoarding. It doesn't make any sense. You can't eat that. <laughs> you know? But it's, it's real, you know, and it, and, and it probably was that because, because, you know, there was a viral video and, you know, people saw people fighting over toilet paper. So they're like, oh, well, toilet paper must be important. So everybody hoards it. Right. And there's, and, the, and you can see it on the shelves. You look at the shelves and their entire sections completely devoid of who knows. I don't even know what, right. Just jump, just ghost town, tumbleweeds. And then there's all this other stuff. And I look, my, I'm like, well, there's a hell of a lot of other really important things that are well stocked on shelves. So it's kind of like that. You know, we will look back at this and we'll be like, oh my God, you remember when people were, you know, like, oh yeah, that was the toilet paper virus. Like, that's going to be the other way we're going to think about this kind of stuff because some of that stuff is just crazy. And if you just, if you be kind, like that framework of just, you have everything to gain by being kind to yourself and kind to other people, by, by, thinking by understanding that this is a difficult time for everybody okay Lawrence to, Lawrence, to me it feels like when you feel like you're constantly right or you're constantly like oh i know that this is going to happen you're constantly anticipating some outcome that you feel like you have a grasp or hold of of what's going to come I honestly feel like that's narrowing the scope of how reality can come to you. Like I agree. I agree. You, you, you funnel down like one possibility when you're in a place of not knowing of like, gosh, I really don't know what's going to happen next. You're opening your, your possibility that's right. uh, ability to connect into other realities to come to you that lay in wait to be activated. What do you think? I agree. I agree. Yeah. Expand your... You know, I mean, this is, this is also, um, you know, well studied in terms of um, just other things where people have been in difficult situations. And it's like the people who survive those things are the people, because what, what, what you're describing when we get like we're right is essentially we're describing tunnel vision. So that's, that's what happens when, you know, you get really amped with cortisol. It's like vision goes like... <laughs> Right. So you're just seeing through this little thing because that's what you need. You know, everything needs to be sharp and just focused. And just. and so, um, but, but what happens when that happens, of course, is you're missing everything else that is not in that tiny point of focus. So people who survive disasters and strange things, right? It's the calm, it's the deep breath. It's like looking around and like, oh, you know, and then you get all these other parts of your consciousness back online. And I feel like, um, I feel like if you're listening to this, um, 
uh, I feel like if you're listening to this, that um, that you, if you can get the other, if you can get more of you online right now and just be kind and just kind of, you know, start to breathe and get back to your exercise and, you know, just the little things that make you feel good, bubble bath. I took a virtual bubble bath, you know, you know and just things like that where you just, eh, you know, let's, let's just make this, it's happening. So let's just ride the horse in the direction that it's going instead of, you know, facing backwards or, you know, riding it, grab, grabbing onto its thigh or something or being dragged by the stirrups. I've seen all versions of that, but you're going to have a lot more fun. Just the horse is going, just ride it. We'll see where it goes. It's an adventure. I mean, it's an adventure. That's the beauty. This is the unknown. People pay for this. They go to adventures so that they don't know, but we're here. Now it's just the whole planet with us. So it's exciting, man. I mean, you, you weren't sitting there going like, Hey, we're going to get stuck in India. How awesome. Crazy. <laughs> so like two days ago, then we were just laying together in the middle of a storm and just like created this hugging meditation together. Mm. And it was just the sweetest thing. And this so like sweet. appreciating each other and just like that we're here, we have breath, we have each other right now. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, would you be willing to do just a few minutes version of yeah, that? Yeah, of course, of course. So like having people hug themselves and just drop into their own hugging meditation. Yeah, I think that's a beautiful thing. So let's let's do that. I, I love that. Thank you. So so um, okay. So what we're going to do then is we will um, yeah. Let's start with breath. So the the first the most important thing is breath, right? So you connect with your breath, and and and. You know, just know that the anxiety is not all yours. It's, this is a shared experience. This truly is a shared experience. So we can let some of that anxiety drain into the ground. Reconnect to our breath. And then you can take your arms, you know, you can put them in your heart and your belly, your genitals. You can wrap, literally wrap your yourself and and I want you to imagine you know anxiety that th those parts of us that are feeling all of this emotional pressure and the anxiety and those things like that's that's inside of you even though it feels like it's coming from outside it's actually inside of you and if you could for this moment just pretend that you could take that little inflamed being inside of you and just love that part as if you were, as if you were loving like a little kitten. And that kitten until you hug it is just scared and mewing and maybe cold and shaky but then you just take that little kitten which is you and you just hug and hold that kitten and you just love that kitten and you just say to that little you because that little being is you and to just say you know what perhaps saying something that you know your mom and your dad didn't say to you when things were rough or scary, but you can say that to you, which is, you know, I've got me, I've got you, I've got me. And we've got this. And I've got you and it's going to be okay. Because it is, I promise you. 100% certainty, this will pass. And so it's beautiful to, to welcome this level of, you know, all the emotions and the fears and the anxieties and love them because this is a rare moment in time where you are laid bare by circumstances. And this is what vulnerability is, except for many of us, the vulnerability right now is within ourselves. 
And so we can love ourselves and be kind to ourselves. Right now, right in this moment, for no reason other than that you're here, you're alive. Take a deep breath. Just let it out. And those of you that are with us, you know, we're in this together. If you need something, reach out. But I want you to, tonight as you sleep, or if you're seeing this in the morning, maybe in your meditation, to really love that part of you that feels vulnerable and exposed and confused and uncertain. And just know, I promise you, this too shall pass. It will. One way or another. And so you just tell that to that little baby inside of you, that little that little being inside of you, you just say, you know what, I got you. It's not a job for a little kitten to worry about this stuff. That's not your job. Mommy's got you, daddy's got you, you know, whatever, however, but I got you. Cause of course you do. And just love that little kitty and just, you know, that little being, just love it, just love it, unconditional. And if you gift that to yourself, if you're listening to this, I promise you share your comments because I promise you, if you do this, you will see that that same quality will come back to you, but it starts in you and with you. And this is the way things work. Thank you, love. Mm. Thank you for all of your wisdom and and tenderness and thank you for being you. My pleasure. I'm so glad we did this. I so needed to do this. You know. I love you so much. I love you so much too. Love you both. Miss you. <laughs> so miss you. We can't yes, wait to see you again. Yes, absolutely. All right, everybody. Thank you. Okay. Till next time. Thank love you. Love you so much. Okay. Take care. Bye, loves.